Welcome to Chop Shop Motors. My name is Clay. Today we're going to do a short video on something just a little bit different. Uh, today we're going to take a look at something super primitive. Uh, I have some Model T's in inventory that I haven't messed with for a long time and I was playing with some of the pieces to maybe get one running in the future and one of the pieces that I was missing was um, in the ignition department and on a old car like a Model T they function somewhat like the very recent internal combustion engines do in that they have a coil pack for each cylinder so a coil for a Model T looks like this it is for the most part self-contained it doesn't use a computer obviously but the coil the condenser and the points are all made into a single unit and there's one for each cylinder so I went through some inventory I didn't have much so I purchased some used ones that were basically cores and I kind of learned what it is, how do you tune them up uh, and make them function, what do you steer away from and so I thought well that's kind of interesting it's not particularly uh, valid for probably most of you but it is a little bit of a peek into some uh, early kind of technology that put the United States on wheels and uh, allowed us to travel all around and and make this planet just a little bit smaller. So let me kind of set you up and I'll walk you through refreshing or tuning up a coil for a, for a Model T. This one in particular is gonna go into a 1924 Roadster. So a 100 year old car. So let me get you set up. Okay, I'm gonna kind of Get you pointed mostly at the bench here and uh, allow you to kind of see what, hopefully, see what I'm working on. So as I showed you earlier, this is what one of those coils looks like. They were made by multiple companies. This particular one was actually made by Ford. It's stamped on it. Um, apparently, when you bought a car in the teens and 20s, uh, you would get four of these in the car. They would come in the coil box. And from what I've read, they would give you four additional ones with the car uh, as spares. So I don't, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's um, what I've read a couple different times. So kind of interesting. So basically what that means is even though a lot of the cars are gone, there's still a fair number of these old coils floating around in garages and basements and um, old businesses and stuff like that. I bought a couple that were from a garage that opened in 1946 and closed uh, last year and the family was selling the business, selling the building and the business was shut down and they found a couple of these in a back room and so that's kind of how they surface. This one is one that I fixed. I <clears throat> put a capacitor in it, which is what we're gonna do to this other one. And then I glued it back together. It was really beat up and coming apart. It's all, uh, you know, dovetailed uh, joints and things like that that hold it together. So um, over time, they if they're left in kind of a rougher environment they will start to come apart so that's enough about this one let me show you what i'm doing to this other one so this is a coil that i bought in a in a box of coils so i bought four of them this was one of them this one is a model t coil it still says ford on it or it says ford on it kw made them and uh probably probably a, a dozen other companies made them that didn't put any name on them but uh, this one was used more than likely for another purpose probably a hit and miss hit or miss engine 
because it has these uh, connectors that you stick a wire into to um, hook them to the spark plug on a hit or miss engine. So a lot of them come with stuff attached to them that they had repurposed them. So there were other uses for this kind of ignition system because it's basically a self-contained ignition system uh, besides just the Model T. When I got this, I pulled the points off of it and uh, I took, a lot of times you can recondition the points. So this is what half of the points looks like. I cleaned it all up and uh, had rust remover on it and got that cleaned up. That's one piece. They're not all, the top piece isn't always brass, but on this particular, on this particular kind, um, it is. So this is a, this is a sure hit. So there are multiple companies that made these points, just like there were with car points. And then I just used the belt sander to take off the burn marks on the points and give them a refresh. So we're talking pretty primitive technology here. So it doesn't take much to make this work again. And then all the other miscellaneous nuts and bolts to put together, I cleaned up. And that's kind of the extent of that part. The next thing is you pull the nails out of this little end here. It's all glued together except for this one panel. This one panel actually slides in if the box isn't too distorted. This one had already had the nails removed. So that's the cover, 100 year old cover. This is what the inside looks like. It basically has primary and secondary coil and it has a capacitor over here <clears throat> and then it is filled with tar to keep everything from jostling around and um, moving and probably breaking and touching and all that stuff. The Basically the test that I do, there are probably a multitude of tests that you can run on this as it is an electrical device, but I'm I basically want to keep it simple and so I check these two posts right here typically there's 30 ohms of resistance on a Ford coil on the on the secondary windings if that has resistance and isn't broken the coil should save when you change the capacitor this coil hat did not function um, when I got it, I did do a bench test on it just to see if it accidentally worked and it did not. So on my limited uh, amount of contact with these coils and from what I've watched and read, n most of the time it's the capacitor. If it has resistance in the secondary windings, the capacitor is probably the culprit. So I will show you how I go about changing the capacitor. So this is the capacitor that I'll work with on this particular one. Uh, let's see if you can see it. That's the size of it. It's a 600 volt. You can use a lower voltage one, but from what I could tell, the 600 volt is typically what most guys use. Um, and it is a 0 0.047 MFD. So, um, I bought these. These are probably old stock from the 70s or 80s, but um, I think they still manufacture them. I hope so, because I'll probably want to do some more of these coils. So let's let me show you how I install it. So the first thing you have to do is you have to realize that this side with the connectors is where the windings are, and you want to stay away from that. If you nick one of those or damage it in any way you you it won't function so you've pretty much junked it so you're gonna want to play over here where the capacitor is so the first thing you have to do is you just have to dig out some of this tar it's kind of yucky and chunks out um, 
There's nothing too glamorous about it. 100 year old tar. When we put it back together, I won't, I don't use tar. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe some guys do and maybe I, maybe I'm making a mistake, but I use a foam spray insulation to fill that cavity and hold everything and insulate it, but I don't use the tar. And I don't really want to mess with the tar personally. So in this little cavity, right in this area, this it, within this one inch area, maybe even half an inch, is where the capacitor was. And as you can imagine, a yeah, hundred years ago, the capacitor is the whole length of this box. It's quite large. When you look at the capacitors now, the solid state, they're quite small. But back in the day, it took a lot more space to make it do what they needed it to do. The other thing that exists in here is there is an insulator between the capacitor. So there's some wires in here that we're gonna solder, solder to, and one end runs up to one of these two posts up here. So that's where the base of the points will attach to. And the, the reason I point to both of them is because it just depends on who built it and when it was built and where it was built, it, it doesn't matter which of those posts it attaches to. It just needs to attach to one. So I'm kind of carefully moving stuff around in here. Inside here, there is also another insulator, and it is on the Ford ones, it is usually a thick piece of glass, and it sits inside there to separate the capacitor from the from the coils over here from the windings so I'm just gonna kind of pull this get this sometimes they're really easy to get out sometimes they're a little more of an argument I just try not to get in too big a hurry because um, once you get them once you get them out it the rest of it goes pretty easy So this is one connector. Can you see that? Yeah. This is one of the connectors on that capacitor. So it's come loose. And um, I wouldn't say it was probably loose inside there, um, but it's come loose from me digging around and pulling on it and prying and whatnot. There are also some little small pieces of either blocks of wood or typically blocks of wood. I've read that sometimes there's um, small pieces of glass, um, probably not, maybe like broken, broken ones that are put in there as blocks to insulate Okay, so this is the capacitor. Big, big guy here. So we're gonna see if we can get this out of here. Sometimes they come out quite easy. Sometimes they put up a little bit of a fight. So that is what that capacitor looks like. Okay. This is what we're gonna replace it with. So as you look down in here, inside here, 
right here is that piece of glass. It's about a quarter inch thick and it runs that whole length of the coil pack. So in this instance, we're gonna be able to leave that one in there because this capacitor is gonna slide right in there. It won't have any trouble fitting in there. Okay, so now we're going to get this other end loose because the basically it the end with the wire attached to it just came off of the existing crusty capacitor. And we're gonna have to get close enough to it to solder to it. Let me get a soldering iron in there and get some stuff freed up and then I'll bring you right back. So what I have done here is I've unsoldered the end of the old capacitor the way it was made. It had a little tang on it. And I took the wire and I put a hook on it. I took our new capacitor and I took the end of it and I put a hook on it. And now I'm going to take some solder with acid core and I'm going to solder this together. Okay, so now I have a nice connection there. On these coils, with if you put a bigger, so these capacitors come in a couple different sizes and some of them are a little bit bigger, like the size of a fat pencil. Not a number two pencil, but a little bit fatter than that. And they don't quite fit in the space here where the old capacitor came out. So sometimes you have to take that glass out and um, some people just do without it. I have been fortunate enough that I've been able to leave the glass in all of them and use uh, and make the capacitor fit. But um, if you have to take this post out, either because it's damaged or to make that solder easier, you have to take the glass out to get access. It is just, it kind of holds those posts in so by doing it this way, I don't have to even mess with that. It makes it quite fast. So now next step will be, I'm gonna take this and get this tab off of here. So I'm just heating up this solder joint enough to kind of get everything to come apart. So everything's kind of apart there. I'll just take some Scotch Brite. Be kind of gentle. I mean, you you are dealing with you know hundred years old stuff, so you can't be too can't be too crazy with it, or it probably will just you'll just pull it apart. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this configuration just a little bit different. So I'm gonna get everything all cleaned up where I wanna solder it. And So 
So I'm just kind of measuring where things are going to go. Um, okay, so again, I'm going to put a little hook on this. Hope you can see me, but it's it's kind of small to see this. Put a little hook on this, and I'm gonna put a small hook on the new capacitor. Get everything to kind of hold together pinch all those joints together and then do the same thing on this third wire So we kind of have everything in place there. We're pretty solid state. So all of this is pretty basic and primitive. Okay. So let's get, close that one. Okay, let's get this. together. Okay, so this is more or less what it looks like. Turn this up, see if I can kind of see what I'm showing you. So this is really what it looks like. Capacitors laying in there, solder joint right there. This runs down to the bottom of the field coil and attaches to the same point down here. So this is the power for this ignition system. That's where the power comes in. Then um, it comes up here, runs through the capacitor. The capacitor brings the power up to the points. The points make and break, vibrate. They call this a vibrator vibrate and on this side the distributor if you will brings an impulse a grounding to this right here and that's what triggers the points to make them break and the charge what goes the spark plug comes out right here so pretty primitive pretty ingenious but that's kind of how it works so Let's push this down and we definitely want the wiring to be far away from this particular wire. So we don't want it to short over to that. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up and we're going to test it. Before we do that, we're gonna to have to put some points on real quick. So let's put some points on. We took and cleaned up a whole bunch of the small parts. Let's see, can you see it? Yeah, all right, all right, so. Put this piece on first, the bottom of the points. That's the one that hooks to the wire that actually touches the capacitor. 
dropping some nuts on it. So I think we will. And if you notice, I have, well, I don't know, can you see it? You might not be able to see it. I have a battery here, a six volt battery that we're gonna try it with. I tried doing this. I've seen guys do run Model T's with really small six volt batteries. And they don't seem to be particularly finicky about that. Um, so I tried a small battery, like a six volt lantern battery, flashlight battery basically, and it did not have enough juice it would sort of make it spark, but I couldn't prove that I was on the right track. So I used a six volt car battery. Okay, so then a little spring goes on here and then it uses a fiber washer there, probably as a dampener. It has a couple insulators up here, right there. Probably can't see it too well, but there they are. Then this brass contact point goes on. Then we have a couple of these nuts that hold the points. And I'll put those on. And a couple different size, a couple different size studs here. So then what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna do an optic alignment. I'm gonna eyeball it. <laughs> Again, pretty basic stuff. So I am looking, I'm looking at the points here to make sure, is that, can you see that? I'm looking at the points to make sure they align this way. And then I'm looking at the points at the back to make sure this guy is aligned in the center of that guy. So, the base looks like it's aligned, so I'll snug it down. Again, 100 year old stuff. Gotta be kinda ginger with it. All right, so then I'll snug this one down because it looks like it's in place. And this one doesn't move. This one doesn't get adjusted, this end of it. So I can snug that down. The only thing that you adjust is placement. But that, after that, you're done. So then I'll look at the point gap and it's a little, it's a little far and I know I'm like, I'm just gonna kind of get it till it's about close. So that looks close enough. So then this nut will go on and lock it. We'll just put it there so we don't lose it. Okay, so what we have is we have the beginning of a coil with a new capacitor. So let's hook some power to it and see what we've created. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I need... So on this particular one... So I've kind of tricked myself. Okay, so I will hook this up to power. This has a spring-loaded contact on it, but I don't have a bare wire, so I'm just gonna kind of set it there. And then, take another jumper, hook it up to the other side of the battery, and I'm gonna see if anything happens. And the other part is, is you can get zapped pretty easy. Okay, so I'm gonna hook that there, and I'm gonna adjust the points.
so they have a nice song. And I'm going to tell you honestly, when I was about 15, I saw my dad do this with a set of coils on the <laughs> kitchen table because it was just me and him. And uh, that's how I kind of learned how it should sound. I have no idea if that's actually... I know there's a test for it to... Uh, more scientific to test the uh, output, but that is the way... Uh, that's the way I learned to do it, so that's the way I'm doing it. All right, now, so it sounds good. The points up here are making and breaking. That's what's causing the buzzing. That's the points making and breaking and are and making uh, impulse that's what the capacitor does so now what we're going to do is we're going to see if it'll actually provide any spark um, i had oh there it is so i will tell you the TV does not like it when you do this. So the energy that's being created, the TV is like, I'm, I'm not down with that and all my solid state whatevers. So I'm just going to kind of put this together. All right. So it's basically hooked up. Once I ground it, it should do something. <laughs> or, or it won't. I mean, it's absolutely possible it won't do anything. Um, but I've had good luck so far. So let's just see what happens. Let me show you what happens. On top of this battery, with this jerry rig tester, you'll see a spark plug right next to the needle nose pliers. That spark plug is just like the spark plug that would be in the engine. Here's what happens to it. So that is basically everything that's involved in what I do to bring one of these old coils back. I don't mess with that secondary winding. If it's bad, I would just set it aside and use it for parts. I wouldn't try to fix it. Um, what I will do with this uh, now is I will fill this cavity with some spray insulation, the kind that you spray in there and it gets a little bigger. I'll shape it to make sure that the lid will go on. I'll put the lid on, I'll glue any of the joints on the box, make sure it's nice and tight, and I'll put a couple small nails in it just like it was when it was new, and give it a good bath, and I'll put it in the box with its brothers. And if, it's, if it gets used on a Model T, I'll unsolder these ends, but I have an old hit and miss engine that is a project long down the road, so I probably won't take these off just in case I ever get to that project. Um, I have lots of projects, so it may not ever happen, but this coil is now rebuilt and ready to go. I'll slip the cover on and voila, I've now saved uh, an old coil with limited skills. That's what I got. And with limited uh, input. I think the coil was 10 bucks. The capacitor was about um, probably three or four bucks. For the capacitor, I bought six of them, so pretty cheap. And the points and all that stuff, I just cleaned up what I had. And there we go. So that is the rebuild, refresh of a Model T coil. I'm Clay for Chop Shop Motors. Thanks for following along on kind of a random uh, project, but I figured if I was doing it in the shop, I might as well film it for you. We'll see you on the next project.